Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm doing two Draw This In Your Style speed paints. The first one is gonna be the Pernil Urim Draw This In Your Style, and the second one is gonna be the Talia.ms Draw This In Your Style of her witch character, Astil. And of course, I will have both of them linked in the description. If you aren't already following them, I highly recommend you do because they're both amazing artists. And this video is basically an excuse for me to talk about how amazing I think they both are, as well as hopefully give you a little bit of an insight into why I chose these two particular pieces to recreate for this Draw This In Your Style episode. Also, I just wanted to quickly thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel. If you didn't already know, it is a learning platform Platform with over 25,000 classes, which I've personally been using myself for over two years, especially because recently I've been watching a lot of watercolor tutorials on there. I do a lot of digital art and I haven't really been doing much traditional art lately, and I really want to get back into it, specifically watercolors. So this one from Erin Kate Archer was especially helpful because I'm actually working on a piece right now with a lot of clouds in it, and I had no idea how to like really even attempt that. And I also like the fact that they tell you if a tutorial is intermediate or beginner, what kind of level it is, so you know whether or not it is suited to you. A premium membership will give you unlimited access to all of the classes for just $10 a month. So if you too want to join the 7 million creators learning with Skillshare, click the link in the description and get two months of premium for free. Thanks again to Skillshare for supporting my channel, it really means a lot. So starting off with Pernil Urim, I saw the drawing that she posted for her Draw This In Your Style and I just absolutely fell in love with the expression that the girl has on her face. I just really liked it and I saw a lot of people's like rendition of this piece popping up on my Instagram and it was just really nice to see how so many people would look at this piece and reinterpret it in so many different ways. So that's why I really wanted to have a go at it. That's kind of what intrigued me to do so and I feel like the expression she has really gives her some character so I was thinking what is this girl gonna be like who is she like all those kind of questions and hoping that would help me you know capture her in my own style so to talk a little bit more about Pernil I think she has an absolutely beautiful art style she manages to keep it simple she will use like flat colors a lot of the time and like cell shading but it still is like really beautifully done she also does a lot of dynamic poses too, which I think just always look good if you can pull them off well. I wish I could pull them off well, that's something I'm kind of working towards, but yeah, I can always really appreciate it when an artist includes a lot of dynamic poses. And I think one more thing I would add that I really love about her art is also her colour schemes as well. I am a big fan of all the colour schemes she uses in her work and her artwork in general, so that was another reason that I really wanted to do this particular Draw This In Your Style. Now, I was was having a bit of a funny kind of style moment when I drew this one and I'm actually kind of really happy with how the face turned out because I think it looks a little bit different to the normal faces I draw. I don't know if that's because sometimes you draw what you're used to seeing especially if you're used to seeing yourself in the mirror and for me I have like very hooded eyes so it's very rare that I'll draw eyes that are different to that and I've started noticing that so this character's eyes had much like, what's it called when you have way more eyelid space? I'm not sure, but basically she had more eyelid space and that's what allowed me to kind of make it look a little bit different. So yeah, I absolutely loved this Draw This In Your Style. It was so much fun to do. And I also really loved looking at other people's entries as well. Moving on to the next Draw This In Your Style. The next one comes from Tasia. Tasia, I hope I'm saying that right. And it is her beautiful witch girl character who has just the most incredible hair. It looks so pretty and I just love the color of it. It really reminded me of like, what's it called? Oh my god. Why do I, my mind always goes blank whenever I'm recording voiceovers for these videos. It's so annoying. Oh, cotton candy. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. But her hair looks absolutely beautiful and I loved her design so much. 
and I absolutely love Tasia's art. I mean, the way she draws faces, especially eyes. So it was so much fun to attempt this character, especially as well, the intricacy of her illustration and line work. If you look really closely, there are so many little intricate details and lines. And while I was recreating it, I was like, oh my goodness, I never put this much detail into my artwork normally. That's another thing I really like about doing the Draw This In Your Styles. It makes you think about what other people do differently and what you could start to do differently as well and I feel like I'm really glad it's kind of like a trend going on to do the draw this in your styles because I feel like you can learn a lot from copying other people's art. I mean obviously the most you'll learn is obviously copying from life and doing lots of studies but seeing how another artist approaches something is always really helpful I think. As I was drawing the character I wasn't entirely happy with how the face was coming out and like I said earlier, I think I'm at a, like a weird style point where I don't really know what I feel like my art style is anymore. But I quite liked how large the eyes looked. I know sometimes I'll draw large eyes and people will comment on it being like, why are the eyes so large? And it's not to everyone's taste, but I don't think I did them too large in this one. I'm never trying to make the eyes like realistic, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the face, but yeah. And just my art in general, it's just changing a lot at the moment. I'm trying to make it better and trying to do all I can. Which kind of leads me on to my next point, which is that I actually am currently hosting my own Draw This In Your Style, and it is just a very simplistic little elf girl kind of sketchy painting I threw together while I was on holiday. Just posting that and having seen lots of people's rendition of it, has been amazing and it's really cool just seeing how many different ways there are drawing something like an eye. I know it sounds weird but there are just so many different ways of drawing something and stylizing something and that's what I really really love about the challenge. I think I'm like becoming addicted to doing draw this in your styles like I finish one and then I start looking for another one to do. It's very helpful for me as well because I am terrible at coming up with ideas for drawings. The only ones that I can think of at the moment that aren't Draw This In Your Style drawings are, well, the watercolour piece I was talking about earlier is literally a Minecraft fan art, so <laughs> don't really know what else to say about that. I've been binge watching the PewDiePie Minecraft series, so. But if you guys would be interested in maybe even seeing my watercolour Minecraft fan art, let me know. I don't know if that's something you guys would even want to see, but if it is, let me know. And if you have any ideas of stuff I can do in watercolour paintings, please let me know. Because I just, I'm just not an ideas person, but I always get like really good suggestions in the comments of what I could draw. So. If you do have anything you're dying to see me draw, or any kind of like fantasy kind of landscape piece you could think of. Oh, and another thing that I really want to do is to draw someone from like a really tricky angle. So from like down below or like way up above. Something that's always difficult is like foreshortening and like foreshortening a hand. That's like one of my least favorite things to draw. Like I said, an extreme pose. If you pull it off well, it will look so good. Yeah, that's probably the next things I'm gonna work on, like more extreme poses. It is currently 5 a.m. and I'm very sleep deprived and slightly delirious, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video anyway. I absolutely loved drawing both of these characters. I really like how both of them came out actually. Even though they were drawn in Procreate, so they weren't drawn in Psy, which is what I'm used to doing but I'm slowly getting more and more used to Procreate. Oh, that reminds me, a few people were commenting some Procreate alternatives in my Should You Switch to Procreate video, which was really helpful, and I actually had no idea about some of them, and I'm really curious about Art Studio Pro, so perhaps, maybe, I might do a video comparing Art Studio Pro and Procreate later on, or maybe just like a first impressions of Art Studio Pro. I the reason I haven't got it yet is because it's not a free app. Although I have downloaded the Autodesk Sketchbook app for iPad, um, which I didn't know was a thing either. I used to use Autodesk Sketchbook like way back in the day on my PC, and like some of my first ever Deviant art posts were drawn in there. But yeah, uh, just there's a lot of things I need to try. <laughs> And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave any suggestions for drawings or future videos down below. I'm not gonna be posting for probably another two weeks because I'm gonna be away, but I will see you guys when I come back again. Bye guys. <laughs>